um, you have to take the stem off. Yeah. You can either pop it out, but sometimes you get a big chunk. I'll show you. Right now. Like when you just pop it off like this, sometimes like the, like there's gonna be chunks missing, like that, okay. and you can't fit as much cheese as you know. You can. What I like to do, I just grab a knife and I just kind of poke around it. Okay, make sure it to all make pops sure, out. Yeah, yeah, make sure that it's gonna all pop out. Doesn't have to. You don't have to cut into it. You just gonna have to poke it. That way, when you pop it out, you know the whole thing pops out. So oh, you get, okay. You get so you have a you have a, like a bigger of space. hole. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you create a bigger hole compared to. You so you know. can still do it with that one. It's yeah. just that you want more cheese. Yeah, I want to fill okay. them up as much because once you start cooking them, I mean the cheese is gonna melt. Okay. And some of you're gonna lose some cheese when it's melting because mm -hmm. you have to flip it over to you know get an even toast on it. Okay. So but after that, you fill it up with cheese. Yeah. You Pop it back in, or you throw them away. Okay. Yeah, I I just throw them away. You can technically you can still eat them. You can make something with them, but I'm not gonna do it. Okay. And then all you do is just stuff them like that. And like I said, with a little spoon, it helps out a lot more. Cause if you eat a big spoon, it's kind of hard. So you just pack it in there, full yeah, of cheese, full of cream cheese. Yeah. As much as you can. I mean, you don't want to, you know, create yeah. a dome on it, but <laughs> you just wanna, like I said. Once you start cooking them, they're going to melt, so you're going to lose some of the cheese out. Okay. So I just try to, you know, a little flat and then a little bit extra in there. Okay. And then all you do is just grab a piece of bacon. And basically you're going to try to wrap it as best as you can. The way I do it is just go over once, try to get the corner, that way you don't have to use too many toothpicks. Okay. And just kind of try to wrap it over. Just keep wrapping it, try to cover every opening as much as you can. Depending how big the mushrooms are, sometimes you can cover them all like the ones over there. Yeah, so if it's a smaller mushroom, you can wrap yeah, it all Yeah, you way. can wrap it all the way. Some of the big ones, like you have little holes. And try to leave the holes like on the sides or on top, not where the cheese is. Yeah, 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 okay. And then to close it, all you need is a toothpick. You can use the flat one, but the flat one breaks a lot. Oh. So I, I like the so round ones. One. Yeah. Or yeah, around. Yeah. And then just wherever you end up, just punch it through it. You can basically punch it anywhere you want, just as long as you grab the other side. So that the other side of the bacon. Yeah, it doesn't wobble out. That way when you quit So it, you just need one toothpick? Yeah. You the one you're good? You can put more if you don't feel confident that the bacon's gonna stay on there. Because sometimes if you don't put it right, when you're cooking it, the bacon starts to shrink. And it's gonna, especially if you ha if you didn't do it right, it'll shrink. It'll start pulling off the mushroom, mm. and then you basically lose all your cheese. So pretty much, you just rip out the stem, or well, yeah. you cut out the stem. Yeah, you just throw rip out the stem. the stem. You can throw it away, and then just grab some cheese, pack it in there. Pack in, okay. And then just wrap it. Wrap up. it around with bacon. Mm -hmm. Put it in with the. Uh, uh, and then, like I said, just try to wrap it as much as you can, and with the very end, whenever you start. Wrapping it, you know, yeah. pick some, pick, pick a place. Doesn't have to be anywhere, like just a random place. Okay. And just make sure that the first time you go over, you go over the, that first, wherever. It's okay. Yeah. To hold on. To, to hold on to yeah, the, to the okay. big. And that then once sense. you start wrapping it, you know, you can go pretty much any way you want. You're just trying to wrap it. You're just trying to wrap you're it. Trying to surround it. Yeah. And then after that, with two pick, you just wherever you land, yeah. that's where you do it. Wherever it ends up, I mean, if it ends up right here. You just put a toothpick right through there across. And then you know just that. keep going until you're done. Yeah. You then kind of the block so after the that, you just keep doing the process and you should be done with, you should yeah. be left with something like this. Yeah, yeah so uh, portobello mushrooms, any kind of bacon as long as it's straight, Yeah. and some cream cheese, and then some uh, some toothpicks and you're fine. You're mm -hmm. good to go. Okay. Uh, outside or what? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I grew everything. But you can put it like on a toaster oven or on a regular oven. No like if you have a toaster oven, as long as like, like I think it's only like five ten minutes that you leave it in there, as long as the bacon is toasted and you're good to go. So usually it's the bacon. Yeah, as long as you cook the bacon, that's the main part. Once you cook the bacon, everything else is fine. The bacon has to be cooked. Yeah. Whenever I do a cookout. Yeah, okay. Like, so any cookout family get it, gets together? Yeah. Snacks? I mean, technically you can 
do these even when you do like burgers or hot dogs it's, you can make these so they're they're like little poppers so oh, basically yeah, yeah, you just like pop them yeah, yeah. and just throw them in you know, and yeah that makes sense they're like poppers with jalapeno poppers kind of yeah my the, the, my brother now the the one from Hawaii the one who liked mushrooms so and so he, he, he saw me doing the jalapenos the ratones oh so that's why you and he like he's like he like you can't do it with mushrooms and like yeah that's what you can do with uh, with lemons bubbles so you hear the bubbles so you hear the when you hear the bubble, then you hear the sound of burning, burning onion. You have to be careful not to put too many because the, the baking grease will catch fire, you know, fire real quick and you'll get a big flare up. Mm. So, I'm trying to space them out. I always leave yourself room like over there in case that you get a flare up, and then they'll it won't cook, but you'll, they'll they'll get all dark. Mm. Like I said, they're kind of bite sized so. Yeah, they're by size. You can eat like two or three. Or if you're a big boy like me, you can eat like six. We're all big boys here. Nah. We use Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas. It's like we went to Hawaii. Like, what do you mean there's no water bird? <laughs> There's no Whataburger? Oh yeah, I mean, there's not a water, Whataburger in a lot of places. <laughs> or H-E-B. I know, right? Yeah, it freaks me out sometimes when I think about stuff like that. Like, I'm so used to getting the Texas Double Whopper at Burger King. Yeah. Oh yeah. That uh, I remember once I was in Alaska, and I asked for it, and they're looking at me like an idiot, like, what the hell are you talking about? And I'm like, oh snap, I forgot, it's a, it's a Texas burger. It's literally called Texas Double Whopper. Uh, you do 10 minutes and you ro rotate it or what? Or you after well, 10 minutes should be all done? If, I mean, the grill's not that hot, that's why it's gonna probably take a little longer, but usually at like every five minutes or so you, you kind of just check on it, make sure if it's, once it starts getting toasty, you will flip it, and then maybe like another two minutes and then you'll check it again and you probably have to like do it on the side, and then the last two minutes, you know, on the other side. Just to get like an even crisp. And you'll see that once they start cooking more brown. So you kind of flip it and then get the other side brown. By the time you keep rotating it, it'll start finish cooking on the other side. Same thing with the jalapenos. You have that kind of brown. Mm. Yeah. So this one's cooked. This one's cooked. See yeah, how the bacon is cooked all in. You see how like, the cheese starting to come out? Yeah. So you don't want to squeeze them too much. So it's going to be soft. Yeah, it's going to be soft though. <laughs> and, uh, and I would take it out before you, you know, put them in. That way people won't bite into it. But yeah, it's, it's going to be soft, so you, you don't want to squeeze these things too much. Just kind of grab them. Maybe you grab them tight, that way you don't drop them in. Same thing with these. Like I said, one. What do you think of the thing that bacon should stay on the bacon already cooked? Because mm. it squeezes against the. Yeah, because it's squeezing against itself. So it's still wrapped around the bacon, uh, the mushroom. But like I said, you're always going to lose cheese. So that's why you want to put as much as you can. And that's how you make mar uh, portobello mushroom bacon wraps. <laughs>